Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. We have a brand new guest speaker on the show today, first time. So we have Elizabeth Wood here with us today. And um, we're going to be talking today about healing the shadow on New Earth and so much more. You know, we always like have one topic, but who knows what's going to come through exactly, right? But we're going to use aspects of the light to help you address deeper shadows than you ever thought possible gain new insights into using new earth energy, experience more expansiveness and oneness by being consistent about how you deal with shadow and so much more. And for those of you who don't know Elizabeth, because like I said, she's new to our show, but she may not be new to you, but she's new to our show. She's considered a world class seer. Elizabeth works on the cutting edge of remote viewing, quantum healing and quantum anthropology with her lifelong ability to see into all dimensions and work with other dimensions of energy, her theoretical and psychic work has been, has helped people all over the world called living library, Oracle and a way shower. Elizabeth has spent her whole life studying anthropo anthropological theory, quantum physics, ancient and modern medicine and futurism. She has two science degrees, including a master's in applied anthropology and her philosophies and practices bridge science and spirituality to support real change in the world. And, you know, we are all about change on the show, right? Changing how we <laughs> deal with light and shadow and raising our vibration and healing, you know, healing those things that are getting us stuck. So Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm very glad to be here. So I'm like, you know, because it's your first time being on our show, I just wanted to ask if you could just share a little bit about your journey, how you got to be known as this world-class seer, and, and, and a little bit about your work. I mean, I know I mentioned a little bit in the bio, but a little bit more about why you, yes. you know, how you started and why you're doing what you're doing in the first place. Yes, very happy to. So it all started, obviously, being born with these interesting gifts, and thankfully I had a family who was very supportive. I'm the oldest of seven children from a military family, and my whole family was always very spiritual, still is, and they always supported me. They trusted me. They, in a way, were my very first teachers, right, because I was seeing so much and I was helping my family, but I always wanted to know what why do I have these gifts and, and are they unique? And so I, my father's a geologist and uh, was in the military. Now he works in the railroad, but he taught me to look at things very systematically in a scientific way. So that started me on this journey, looking at my gifts in a scientific manner. And 10 years of college later, I didn't have all the answers, but I had some more clear answers. Mm -hmm. And, and more then, questions, I'm sure. Yeah, more questions, right? And so one of the things that I didn't know after coming out of college was all the rules. Like, what are the, what are the rules? Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up working for a mystic. I became a personal assistant to a mystic, and her name is Lucia Renee. But I ended up learning all the rules and sort of learning about my gift from her perspective, which was completely different than the scientific realm that I had been delved into. So she taught me a lot about that. And then I was able to understand that I'm truly a psychic, right? And I didn't mm -hmm. like that word at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, no, I don't do that. I'm not a, I don't look in crystal balls. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, this is what your gift is. And here's why it's important. But also here's how you can fail miserably if you don't do things carefully. And this kind of segues into what we're talking about, but basically she showed me what my limitations are, what my gifts can do, and how limitless much of that work can be. Hmm. I ended up just slowly but surely helping women, and especially women, process and shift ego, shift density, shift trauma. And I got really good at helping people to do that. And then I found also that I'm an incredible healer, a quantum healer, not something at all that I was interested in for others. I was mainly wanting to heal myself. But it turned out that I was so screwed up that I was the perfect guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so I started out just so messed up, body, mind, soul, you name it, to, to heal really clearly focus on my healing i found all these beautiful techniques that other people weren't using yet yet mm -hmm. yet 
started to share them and, and test them out with other people. So I'm sort of like a spiritual scientist. I came into this spiritual work from the back basement door of science, really. Mm -hmm. And all the other people that everybody knows about, I had no idea who they were. So, so it was kind of interesting and special to be able to bring to the table something a little different, a little fresh. Um, and basically, that's how I ended up here. <laughs> awesome. I love that. And I love that, that title of uh, spiritual scientist, right? Mm -hmm. Because the spiritual, uh, I mean, everybody thinks it's woo-woo, but it's really, it's really not. There's a system to it, there you know? Is. It, 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 it's actually based in science, you know, it's just because we don't understand it with that we think it's woo-woo, right? But there are laws governing all of that, isn't there? There are, there's these universal laws and there's an incredible amount of them. The basis of those are things that we can even find in our own embodiment. Mm -hmm. um, and as, a, as that spiritual scientist, especially an anthropologist, and for those of you who don't know what anthropology is, because actually, um, Alara, I've found that a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they think I'm an archaeologist. <laughs> Um, anthropology in general is the study of the human race, past, present, and future, and that includes the body, the emotions, the mind, and the spirit. And in quantum anthropology, which is a new branch of anthropology, I'm one of the forerunners of that branch. There's other people in the, in, on the planet doing that too, not a lot, mm -hmm. but so this is a new branch of science. Quantum anthropologists are saying our bodies are our greatest measuring tools right so in science we always have we're limited on what we can discover by the tools that we have so the better the tools the more you can discover right but we often forget to talk about the body as really the greatest tool it is the greatest tool we have and in anthropology we don't consider the personal experience anecdotal at all we consider the personal experience incredibly vital to the body of work, which is discovering how human beings evolve and what's it going to take for, for example, humans to solve their own problems. That's what anthropology is all about. In quantum anthropology, we say, how does quantum physics, how does quantum physics help change human culture, human mindset, how does quantum physics help us change and how do we work with quantum physics? Because we all are doing that all the time without even really realizing it. Yeah. So we get to bridge the quantum. We get to bridge this very precious appreciation of the personal experience. And then we ask every day, what am I really here to learn? What am I here to discover as a spiritual scientist? Cause all of us are spiritual scientists. Mm -hmm. We're all trying to discover and carve out this path to to something mm -hmm. and that that something in my mind is what the spiritual community calls enlightenment it's a more evolved way of living in harmony with the planet right now we're not living in harmony with the planet you know every day most of us are trying our very very best one step at a time you know one recycle at a time one care you know one organic buy at a time mm -hmm. to live in harmony with the planet we're watching these systems shift and change and crumble and be destroyed and new systems being built and that's what the whole new earth movement is really about what are we going to be doing as we rebuild are we going to be rebuilding in harmony with the earth she's requiring that of us mm -hmm. she's, our, she's our boss <laughs> our right. body our bodies mainly, not entirely, came from Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the key. That's what I'm seeing right now. I love it. It's beautiful. And you know, and that's the thing. It's about being in harmony with the with the earth, but also being in harmony with ourselves, being in harmony with spirit, yeah. I think, as well, right? And a lot of times um, we minimize our personal experience. But that's where we, that's our laboratory, that's our school, is through our personal experiences, isn't it? That, that's how we yeah. learn where we're going, what we're doing, how we're feeling, right? Yes, exactly. And all over the world, I get to be able to tell people, what you're experiencing is valid. And your body didn't stop 
being part of nature. You know, we, we live in like, for example, this house, right? We've created a brand new environment that's never existed before, but it's also separated us from Gaia. Mm -hmm. And all of that, all of that is done now. All that's done. We're leaving it all behind. We're leaving the old ways, even the old teachings, because we're navigating new waters now. We're at the edge of consciousness. All of us are. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this or how short of a time you've been doing this. We're all at the same starting line right now, all of us, all of humanity, and I, I've had visions of this, and other seers have too, where human beings are set up right at the edge of this consciousness, trying to navigate new water that we've never been in before. Mm -hmm. and, and while this might have happened on other planets, and we might have soul memories about that, what's happening on Earth is incredibly unique, and it's never happened before in this universe. So one of the things that's so cool about it is, first off, the Earth is like a United Nations for our galaxy at the moment. And the Earth herself is so special and unique. I mean, we're just now discovering aspects about her that we'd never known before, such as that she makes her own water. We used to think that the water came from comets, and it doesn't. She makes her own water. Um, those kinds of interesting aspects that we're finding out. But it, it leads us to, well, what is the whole goal? And this is where it gets really interesting, because here we've had about a half a million years of bondage and oppression and suffering and trauma. And this oppression, you know, every single day I'm speaking to people who are oppressed, who are sick and tired of being traumatized, who are suffering incredibly. Some of that trauma is not even theirs. It's written in their DNA from their ancestors, right? Right. Everybody's tired of it. They're just, they don't want to suffer anymore. And then I ask, I ask the source field, hey, why? <laughs> why did we have to suffer so much? Like, I get that, okay, yes, suffering helps us learn better than all the good times do. I get that. But what about humanity as a whole? And you'll find that when I speak, I'll zoom in and out of reality. I'll get, I'll get down to the personal and I'll look at the global and the galactic and then back down, um, universal. I zoom in and out a lot. But if we were to zoom out at the global galactic situation, what is the point of us suffering for so long? It turned out to be the most amazing answer. First, that our power as human beings is so great that without being able to challenge ourselves through suffering and be willing to continue to come back to this planet who's imbalanced to try to make a difference, um, without that, our hubris, our arrogance might have turned us into something very different. And instead, now we get to experience all of this, be able to shift through it as a whole species over a grand period of time into what we're meant to be, a very highly evolved being, an ascended being, who are emissaries of compassion and unconditional love. And I mean emissaries in that we have an intergalactic job to fulfill in the long run. That's what the golden age is about. That's what we're shooting for here we will get ourselves together here on this planet and finally create balance and harmony. And from there, our experiences as a species will become intergalactic. We will help to bring compassion and unconditional love to other places with suffering because we will know it so well. And that was the big message that I got when I asked that crazy question. <laughs> I hope that'll help people. Oh, absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And, you know, and that explanation and just knowing, you know, that we are moving towards that golden age. We are evolving. We are more and more of us taking that stance of um, embodying compassion, right? Embodying unconditional love so that we can share that with people who are still suffering, you know? Um, cause it's not going to be all of us at once. It's going to be in phases and stages, you know, not everyone's yes. going to be in the same place at once. So we who are on the forefront now, that's our job to that's continue right. to, to serve, to help, to assist, to 
transmit energy so that people can start to wake up and start to see that, you know, you don't have to suffer, right? That's right. And that to value the suffering, actually, I would like to point out that sometimes we get it a little wrong. We say, well, we're going to end all suffering. Well, that would mean we'd stop learning. And that's never going to happen. We're always going to have some kind of suffering. It's really that the approach now, and that's the approach I want to take today, is incredible value of obstacles, suffering, challenges, a different approach to those challenges to not say we're trying to end it all forever, but to say how can when we approach those problems, how can we do it differently so that we can actually get incredible Easter eggs of energy and grace and learning for our soul's advancement in the long run. How can we do that? The 3D is tough because you're juggling a lot of crazy rules and laws in the 3D. And here we are in the 3D and everyone's saying, we want to get out of here. We want to get out of the 3D. But that's not the job. The job is embodiment embodiment of all those higher dimensions into the 3d world and then watching how that embodiment that back and forth effect from the material from the physical and you having that dance creating a, a new life every moment and it is momentary every moment is a new life a new chance we beat up on ego we beat up on suffering and we beat up on linear time Yet these three things are some of the most amazing tools for learning. Without linear time, we wouldn't have free will. Without suffering, we wouldn't learn. We wouldn't be better. We wouldn't ascend. And without ego, we certainly wouldn't learn either. So I'm here to say that the new way, <laughs> the new earth way of dealing with shadow is to value those things in an infinite way value them as precious and recognizing them not as there to make you hurt or be in pain all the time no they're there so you can advance and that's actually the number one way to advance is to embrace those challenges each time in the moment and you know i would say that those challenges i don't like the word suffering because it's so heavy but those challenges and those obstacles right they they can be, if you allow them to be, a gift and a blessing because they show you where you're at. They show you what you're still working with. They, still, they show you where, you're, where you still have energy stored or a charge around certain things. I mean, I just had something yesterday. So it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody does. <laughs> and it's going to continue, right? Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's not just one time and it's done. It's like it, because there's a spiral, right? And in the spiral, in, you know, some people say spiral. Some people say, you know, peel the onion, whatever, layers. But beyond that, each time you work with that shadow, you work with that energy, uh, you learn something new. And you learn something new about you, yourself. You learn something new about humanity. You learn something new about spirit. You learn something new about oneness. And you learn something new about your role in it, right? Exactly. Yeah, and your role in that. And then we can ask, well, why are these patterns showing up all the time? Exactly. And, and why, why every time that I try to go do these particular things, do I find this block or whatnot? And exactly, you're very correct in that. There's layers to it. And even after you get past your own personal layers that, that you'd been learning or dealing with in this lifetime, then you end up going into layers of trauma and density and obstacles and challenges that are written in your DNA from 500 million years of ancestors. And so you you keep shifting those layers too. These bodies are kind of like houses that you inherit and the DNA is like a house with all kinds of junk from your family members. Good stuff and some bad stuff. And we're always trying to make more room. We're trying to erase that rewritable CD a bit and make a lot of room for light. That's a big piece around what I want to share pe with people today is how to do that. But the and the important part is that even if even if you've cleared out all of your DNA, you'll end up then looking at your past life stuff that's coming through too. It's not going to stop. And here's the the good thing though. It's sort of like archaeology in this case we get to use it as an example 
In archaeology, it takes a lot less time to move the dirt than it did for the dirt to get there. And in this case, we're not using a toothbrush to move layers of junk out of the way or dirt. We're actually using like big, huge, massive tools that shift things immensely. And then what happens? Then you can embody more light. You see the process of embodiment. Yes, it's an intention. It's a choice. But then you got to do work <laughs> and you got to be consistent about it. And there is a very specific set of things that people who I've watched over many, many years who've been able to get the results they want, you know, more enlightenment, more embodiment of light. What does that even mean? It means that you feel more expansive. It means you can feel energy better. It means your third eye is able to function at a good quality level, a healthy level. Everyone is psychic. Everyone is an empath and everyone has intuition. And so I like to point out the brain mind, we have three brains, brain mind, heart mind, gut mind, they all have spiritual abilities. Seeing and perceiving energy inside and out, because the third eye is not just external, it's internal too. And then we have feeling energy, being able to feel energy and interact with our surroundings in a certain way, and then being able to know, know fully from the whole body experience, is this going to help me survive in harmony with the earth? Not just survive, not survive in the matrix, survive in harmony with the earth. So we have our bodies that can give us that. And the more we work on trauma, density, and junk in our DNAs, in our mindsets, in our ways of functioning, in our reactions and triggers, moving those out of the way, lifting the charge, like you said, and then trusting and knowing that we're on the right track. The more we do that, then you have full body enlightenment experiences. And this is measurable across many thousands and thousands of people across the planet doing this. Many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people doing it. So we know that it's true. We know that it can happen. And that attainment of higher states of oneness is the goal as a human race. So as we do it in our homes without having talked to anybody about it, we're literally helping the whole human race. The whole human race is becoming more psychic. I have a good example of it, for example. Um, the, the killing, the massacre that happened in New Zealand, a lot of people were asleep in North America, literally, like they were asleep in bed when that happened but there was a wave of energy that went across the planet and i have a core group of people that i've been continuing to work with i have an open door policy anyone's welcome and so we work together and i especially tend to collect empaths of different kinds but these empaths they all typed me early in the morning i don't know what the heck happened last night but i felt something shift I felt something big and it was not good. And it, you know, it, it woke me up. Like tons of people were typing that saying, I could feel something, I don't know what it is. And then blam, the news comes out. And then everyone's typing me again. Oh my gosh, that's what it was. We could feel it. That's what's happening to people all over the planet. Big, huge stuff happens. Notre Dame lights up on fire. Everybody can feel it because we're all becoming more psychic as a human race. Why? Well, two reasons. First, the earth. I always like to joke around when my husband says something like, I wonder what the heck's going on today in the galaxy or something. And uh, cause it'll be like a weird day or whatever. And I'll say, well, we're just in a new place in space. <laughs> and it's my joke because it's true <laughs> that literally we're in a new place in space every day, every moment. We're like, we're moving so fast through space. We forget that a lot of times. But the earth, you know, she's been doing a lot of work for many years and she shifted the, the, the structural matrix off of her now. There's no structural matrix. What's left is now systems and fields of energy. And we're sifting through that too. She's embodying herself. She's embodying things like Christ consciousness, unconditional love of the high heart, really particular energies. 
and even better, she's embodying dimensional energies. And we thought that this year she was going to just stick with like the fifth dimension. No, she decided to go ahead and embody the sixth, seventh, and eighth along with them. This is mind blowing. This wasn't supposed to happen for another thousand years. And she says, nope, humans got to get their stuff together sooner. So I'm going to put on a new dress and create a whole new party. Wow, and the part wow. the party is formlessness and now there's no foundation which is why all of the crazy structures and the elite and all the stuff's crumbling and we're watching it happen before our eyes furthermore the good news is we're still rebuilding we're rebuilding we're not just watching it crumble it's like humans are so amazing we get to rebuild and we're so clever we're rebuilding in the middle of the destruction <laughs> that is we're, awesome. And we're taking elements that work. We're not just throwing everything out. Like, we're still going to use money. Yeah, we're going to totally use money. Money's going to look very different and feel really different over the next few years. First off, it's going to start getting backed by actual real currency. It's not going to be fake anymore. We're going to have gold backed currency. Uh, we're going to have silver backed currency. It's going to feel different. It's going to act different in our lives. It's going to be full of energy instead of empty. And that's going to be a really big game changer for the human race. We're going to have more local currencies. We're going to have layers of currency. Lots of really inter interesting things will happen. But we didn't throw out the whole idea of money. Right. We're going to, we're going to recreate it. And, and that's great. So it's sort of like, hey, we're, we're dis dismantling this house. We're dismantling the foundation. The new foundation is what Earth is choosing. And in that, we get to deal with the shadow in such a new, precious way, a way that we haven't before, a, a collective way. Humans have been looking at themselves as a collective in the mirror for a while, and they haven't liked what they saw. And there's been a process of grieving. There's been a process of anger that's happened in all of us. We've felt it over the past several years where all of us who can tap into all this, we've noticed that, hey, I feel really angry today. Why? Is this even mine? Probably not. <laughs> it's the whole collective recognizing that we have a lot of work to do and that we don't like what we're looking at right now. And that's okay. That's okay. Just like in a normal grieving process, we have to be willing, right? Levels of willingness, willing to go in and say, I'm actually going to fully embrace this. I'm going to let it flow through me. I'm going to merge with this anger. I'm going to merge with this grief and move through it to something even better, a better version of me that's going to shift layers of dark, dense junk and trauma out of the way. And the whole collective is doing that. So we're on a roll here. I'm incredibly hopeful. There's a lot that tries to keep us in states of disarray, despair, and, and lack of hope. And that is not at all what's really going on. Um, and I'm really amazed at how efficient and effective human beings are going to get. So don't let yourself fully buy into the despair it's not true what's true is that we're all waking up and we're part of this together we're all forerunners that's blessed what's true is your personal experience that's what you'll want to focus on most and that's going to shift the collective in ways that you'll be able to perceive soon enough <laughs> but that's what i'm seeing right now alara Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And thank you for sharing that. And, you know, just knowing that, you know, as we are working on ourselves, right, we are making a difference in the collective in, in all of humanity, right? So even sometimes even the little shifting that we do, and sometimes it's big. And Lisa, we were talking about, you know, she was experiencing some stuff today. And it's like, maybe the earth, maybe there's something going on with the earth, you know, mm -hmm. and that, that, you know, I've noticed that since January, since the beginning of this year, it's been so much more intense. So yes. much more intense, right? Um, and it's like, it's not like we go looking for, okay, I'm going to heal this. I'm going to clear this. No, the stuff just comes up and it's like, all right, I got to deal with this. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't just um, put it under the rug anymore, right? When the stuff mm -hmm. comes up, you have to, 
deal with it because we are embodying more light. We are embodying more light as we are doing the work. But as we're embodying more light, I find it, it seems like we are becoming more responsible for our creations, our reality, and um, how we're moving forward, right? We can't just put blinders on anymore and hope and pray that something will change. I think now we, we, we're at the point where we are all making a difference and we all have to choose to, yes, I'm going to show up. Yes, I'm going to take a stand for myself, for my personal experience to, to shift it and, and move forward, to look at the crazy stuff, to look at the shadow, to and you know use the tools that I have, find more tools because sometimes the old tools are not working anymore. So find some new tools and you know, let's go, right? Now that's what yeah, I'm getting for this year. <laughs> it's been amazing. I think you're right on and and what's interesting is this really amped up energy is those latter dimensions coming online and nobody noticed it because it's formless. <laughs> we were looking for something more based in form like 5D but no it's very formless and then it what's what's going on too is 5d is helping us out a lot 5d is all about that you know infinite possibilities and the fractal universe and so in 5d um if you have like for example some kind of worthlessness issue which is a very common one a worthlessness issue well that worthlessness issue is going to continue to multiply in 5d because that's how fractals work it's patterns that multiply and so that's going to multiply from the 5d and then you're going to be like oh man i'm like surrounded in worthlessness <laughs> i'm up to my neck in worthlessness now and it's going to show you what you need to work on and and keep multiplying until you work on it and then when you've shifted it what's going to multiply all the light the light will multiply instead and that's what's so cool about 5d now 6d is all about ancient ascended and modern ascended mastery it's about uh, the ascended masters and embodying them right being able to embody the ascended master within the self. And if you have any worthlessness issues, for example, that's going to keep you from being able to fully embody true mastery. Now, what is that true mastery? A lot of times it's the shifting out of identity altogether. So a lot of folks will say, well, I just don't know what my purpose is. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I wanna do. And it's because they've been told that success means that they have a really clear identity and some really clear purpose that's only theirs. And that's not really how it all works because the purpose is the same. We're all here in this universe, and I'm not just saying the planet or you, I'm talking about the whole universe. The whole universe is here for one purpose. And that is to answer the question, what is love? That's what the whole word of God was that created this universe. It was a question. This is an experiment. And we're answering that. Of course, learning about not only what is love, but what is not love too. It's a double question here, which is why we have duality. It's why we have shadow and why we have light. And you're right, Alara. We can't I, I like to say we can't shove our heads in the love and light sand. You can't. Instead, you can't you, you can't go to war with the dark either. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I used to be a specialist in, you know, killing demons. That was my thing. I don't do that anymore. Um, I'm not at war anymore. And I think that's really important. While there is a lot going on that feels like it's a war, yes. But if you zoom out and you stand to look at the shadow and the light, there it's all made of light. Even the darkest of the shadow, that's what they forgot in the deepest dark of the shadow. You know, anyone who's in that shadow, they've truly forgotten that they're made of light. That's why when you, when you hold unconditional love, entities can't stay. That's why when you hold unconditional love and neutrality, that things work out. It's because it's all made of that. Now, with the shadow piece, you know, we're not going to be playing in that realm of the 4D anymore, of the 
you know, we're for that or we're against that. And this duality, constant duality and constant polarities, we're not going to be playing there anymore. The earth is not playing there anymore. She's moved on beyond even the angelic realms. She's moved into the realms of complete and total neutrality and understanding. That's what 8D is all about. And the angelic realms are the seventh dimension. So I just kind of slowly explained several dimensions. <laughs> but the, the 8D is all about the high heart of unconditional love. Now, unconditional love can have a lot of emotion to it from the main heart. But the high heart is up here in the upper chest. The high heart is very sovereign. It's very neutral. And so neutrality, the neutral type of unconditional love is what she's embodied now. She's trying to show us where to go. What's the next step? She's showing us that by embodying that. And we will find that the earth no longer suffers from that position any longer. She doesn't suffer anymore. And yes, I literally just said earlier that we're not trying to end suffering. <laughs> But by embodying higher states, you end up naturally not suffering. And that's what's cool about it. We still want to use the challenges, but in those higher states, you can come up across a challenge and not suffer, not have a trigger or reaction anymore, but say, ooh, this is interesting. Be a spiritual scientist at that level who's trying to understand from neutrality and objectivity. And this is special. This is really spectacular. Uh, I have friends who will ask me stuff like, well, why can you, how? How can you have all these children? I have three kids and they're very small. I have a 16 year old, a four year old and a two year old. And I run a working farm, a very a four acre working farm, lots of animals, I've got a zoo. I have a working marriage that's really, really good. And I have, you know, friends, I have a, international business and I'm still working 100% of my time on building my ability to retain and contain more light. How can I juggle those things? And I said, it is from objectivity that I can do that. And it's objectivity is not something I learned from the spiritual folks. It's something I learned from science. And so I was trained for over a decade how to be an incredible, objective, neutral person who can help people own their problems, make sense of them, and solve them on their own. That's what applied anthropology is. So that's what I'm good at. But I actually am so blessed that that objectivity and neutrality is something that I know so well because it's where I've been able to do this, this work from and still juggle a very 3D life with a very high dimensional embodiment too. And watch my marriage get better and the people around me get better and my children be happier because of that. And watch the effects it's having on my property, my animals, my household, my finances, everything. I get to watch the effects of that embodiment. That's what we're here to do. That's so awesome. that's, that's really fun, yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. And, and, and that's the thing, it's like you can, you can embody that neutrality. You can embody that 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 sense of um, understanding and uh, objectivity, and still be in the world, still contribute to the world, the three D reality, still live in the three D reality. It, it's it's not this or that. It's like it's an integration of the two, and through that, everything can get be you know be as you like, right? It it really is, and it's not necessarily as I like. Not at all. It, it does. I have no likes anymore. Mm. I, don't, I don't have any like specific um, things that I'm trying to attain at this point. At this point, I'm on the edge every day, every moment, recognizing in the moment what needs to be done. And yes, I do have lists. <laughs> yes, I do have like things to do. I have calendars and all of those things. But I have them in front of me as a living fluid thing those things are constantly changing and in the moment is where i'm embodying all that power at this point i don't have an identity anymore 
I, I say I'm Elizabeth Wood with an anthropology degree and all this stuff, but I have none of that as a structure in my embodiment any longer. So I don't have any of that. I don't have any personal desires at this point. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm 36. So if that's possible for me, I know it is for anyone because I've been, I've been through from the very bottoms of despair, ready to commit suicide to here. Mm -hmm. So lots of extremes, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting. Yes. I, I think that um, at this point, if I was to say I have a goal, it's simply to continue to embody even more light and expand my field to extreme, you know, extreme edges that I don't even necessarily perceive yet. Mm -hmm. That's really the goal. And from that, that's where the trick is. From that, the universe sets us up to succeed if we're constantly focusing on that. That's what I mean by being consistent. And so I, um, if it's okay, Lara, I'd like to talk about what exactly do you need to be consistent about every day to get there? Yes, please. Okay. Sure. So first thing is that you need to self-assess, to stand in the witness of the soul. The soul is the one animating the body. And the body is not in charge. You're in charge of the body. You're a soul with an incredible and amazing history of its own. And the body isn't in charge of you. It's the other way around. This is your machine. It's your organic living machine. In fact, it's a symbiotic machine. Most of the DNA in your body is not even yours. It's the DNA of bacteria. <laughs> Most people don't realize that there's bacteria in every part of your body, even your brain, that run the systems. And that's pretty amazing. That's where the em emissaries of the earth is what I call them, those bacteria. But to self-assess, what are you self-assessing? Any reactions, any resistance, any emotional turmoil that might be showing up, any expectations, any attachments, all of those have to go. So when you're in self-assessment mode as a way of life, then you're constantly noticing if you have a reaction or an extreme emotion or even a subtle emotion. And as a spiritual scientist, then you're going to track that. You're going to say, oh boy, I felt that. I wonder where it came from. And then's the next step. So I'll give myself as an example. Um, earlier, I was speaking with my husband about his business. And he's been struggling with his worthlessness stuff around his business, just like all of us do, especially when you're running your own business and it's just getting started. You feel like you're just treading water or speaking to a wall. <laughs> and so he's dealing with this. And suddenly I found myself really getting amped up earlier. And I was like, wow, I'm like, really upset <laughs> and so i'm like wow that's really interesting where is this upset coming from and this can all happen within a moment right it, it didn't take me long to figure it out so then i started following the thread of my emotions and then i started to find well i'm not so angry as i'm sad and then i started getting into the sadness following that thread why am i sad where did that sadness come from and I realized it's because for six years, I've been helping my husband to try to have confidence in himself. And it's not been perfect at all. And it's been really hard on me to watch him suffer. And so I had to acknowledge, hey, this hurts because I love him so much. Why? Because I'm attached to him. <laughs> so I found this huge attachment from my heart going to my husband and it wasn't an attachment that allowed total unconditional love to go and support him as he digs through his own worthless no i was investing myself really deeply have been am investing myself really deeply in his outcomes so now what now what do i gotta do with this attachment well first off i can't get upset about the fact that I'm super attached to my husband. I mean, that's normal. Yes, but this attachment's blocking me. 
It's blocking me from being able to fully stand in unconditional love for him so that he can actually be lifted up by that light. So I go into the attachment and I welcome it. I welcome the attachment. I let it continue to unfold. There's going to be layers over the next several days, maybe weeks, maybe months that I'm going to discover around this attachment I have to my husband and his outcomes. And so as I find each of them, I'm going to go in and I'm going to emotionally welcome them in my body. I'm going to feel them fully. I'm going to go down into them and find the plugs and find the layers and I'm going to welcome those too. And then I use my special technique to help me to do this. And I'm going to show you how to do it because it's so easy. It's called heart commands and we use the heart field. Remember, you're the witness, you're the soul witness in charge of the body. And so we're going to use the heart space to actually shift this stuff out. You're going to command those layers out. So let's do a quick clearing together now because it's so easy. And we're going to look at any attachments and densities. I'm going to name off some classic stuff that we're going to shift out. But my way of doing this kind of clearing is very different. Because I have studied physics for so long, there are rules to physics and one of them is that there is no vacuum people like to say oh there's a vacuum in space no there's not every time that some object moves there's something there to fill it in the universe doesn't have vacuums that's out in the void outside the universe <laughs> so in this universe we don't have vacuums when you clear something you have to replace it with a quality of light that you want. Light is particles, so you're filling it in with something else. But what happens if you don't replace something after you cleared it? Either it's gonna come right back or something else is gonna take its place. Maybe something you don't want. So I'll show everybody how to do it now. So if you drop into the heart, you can put your hand on your heart if you like. You can say it in your mind or repeat it out loud if you like. And we'll say, dear heart, please lift any dark or dense energies, any trauma or negative programs, any attachments, expectations, resistance, anything that is blocking me from embodying higher levels of light, up, down, or out of my whole body and field now. And then take a big deep breath. And then we'll say, Dear Heart, please Dear heart. fill my whole body and field with the light of unconditional love, harmony with the earth, and total neutrality. Now, and then take another big deep breath. And so many of you will have felt that stuff shift out and the new light come in and there's some interesting things that will happen to you as you clear those layers every day you can be using the same clearing every day and get new results every day because it doesn't mean that we just got rid of all of our expectations or attachments we got rid of a layer of them and so right now i've already am feeling a lot better <laughs> because I was focusing in on shifting that and welcoming in that neutrality and unconditional love with the outcome that the more I do that, the better I'll be able to hold a space of pure neutrality and love for my husband and my family and myself welcoming more light. So that is one of the main ways, but there's parameters. So here's the deal. Anything goes. Physical pain, you can be asking for physical pain to shift out of your body. Any kind of emotional, mental issues, trauma, negative programs, any triggers that you have in the moment that you want to look at later, but you can't because you're like driving. <laughs> uh, you, you know, any random emotions that you're like, whoa, holy cow, I'm really mad right now, but I can't be mad. I need to keep focusing on what I'm doing. I'll come back to it. That's okay. And then you know, any kind of spiritual junk that you need to shift to, umbilicals, ties, um, spiritual trauma, entities, dark, dense energy, whatever. 
all of that goes. Then you're going to replace it with qualities of light that work for you. And you noticed I said that I'm asking for these things to move up, down, or out. That's because we have a double torus in our body, just like the universe. We have energy spinning up and out, we have energy spinning down and out, and we have energy moving out directly from the heart. So we're commanding it the directions that it needs to go. That stuff will sort itself. Heavy stuff goes where it needs to go, the lighter stuff goes where it needs to go. We're just giving it permission to use our field. Then we say now, we gotta, we're just making a command to a, like a computer, a machine. So you gotta tell it when, when do you want it done now? And then we take a deep breath because that tells our parasympathetic nervous system that this change is okay. And so what you'll find is that your body actually really wants you to be in charge. The body will do anything for you. The body is your most loyal, amazing friend and tool in the whole world. And they really want to help us, our bodies. So those are the parameters. That's what's so beautiful about the technique. You can do it in your head while you're at the grocery store. You can do it while you're driving. You can do it in the morning or in the evenings. We start with that. And then we get into some of the digger, deeper digging, which I'll explain. But I just wanted to see if you had any feedback there, Laura. Well, I was just going to say, I'm like yawning like crazy over here. <laughs> so, and I, I, I wrote it in the chat because like, I'm like yawning like crazy because that's, that's how I shift. Everybody knows that's yeah. how I shift is by, by yawning, you know. So it's like, it's still. <laughs> you know, I love it. Good, you know, good. So, um, you know, if, if some of you um, are feeling it, you might be feeling yawning, you might be feeling something else, you know, or you might be not, not, not feeling anything at all, but just know That's and right. have, the, have the intention that, yes, it is, it is shifting and, and uh, moving. And now I'm getting cold. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to talk about what happens to people when they use this particular technique a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I've been so graced to be able to share this freely with people all over the planet. And what's really cool is I'll teach a lot of different practitioners too, and then they'll teach their people. And then I get feedback of whether or not it worked for their 200 people or whatever. So I've got actually feedback from many, many thousands of people about this technique. And that's what we want, right? Because then we hone our techniques like spiritual scientists to make sure we get measurable results. So some of the results are that you'll feel lighter. You actually will see colors brighter. Why would you, why would that happen? Well then, because there's not so much density in your field. It's amazing how multidimensional density can actually keep you from experiencing 3D amazingness and light. Mult, I'll say that again. Multidimensional density can keep you from experiencing what's so awesome about the 3D. And that's one of the things you'll find is that you'll, you'll have more energy coming in, you'll feel more expanded, you'll feel more focused, and you'll be able to see more color. Now, another thing that'll happen to you too is that you're going to gain higher states of consciousness. And we're talking about using this consistently every day and, and forever, I'm gonna continue to use it till I'm dead. So, and probably beyond that. <laughs> um, but the whole part about it is that if you're consistent about it, there's really no limit to how much light you can embody with this. Mm -hmm. There's none, there's no limits, it's quite cool. Now we, we would like, we need to get into some of the nitty gritty though, because we didn't necessarily go deep down into the junk, right? We got to go in. How do you do that properly? Well, we, we welcomed it. So that's the first piece. Then we might do some physical shifting of things that might block us, but we still need to deal with the core root causes of things. So you're going to consistently keep following that thread till you find that attachment that you're working on. Then you'll notice how that attachment shows up in your life. And you can either do like a, a polarity square around it. Now a square is fairly straightforward and this is Leslie Temple Thurston's work and I highly recommend the book The Marriage of Spirit if you want to have some really good mental practices for processing. 
Um, but a square is looking at your fear and your desire around a polarity. So for example, my fear that my husband will stay in worthlessness. My desire for my husband to stay in worthlessness. Ooh. <laughs> my fear that my husband will become too arrogant. My desire for my husband to be arrogant. We broke down a worthlessness, arrogance, polarity, and we're looking at fear and desire. So I'm looking at any time I've had fear or desire around my husband being worthless or him being arrogant or myself being worthless and or being arrogant. That's a very good mental way to break things down and then you're gonna systematically look at the emotions that come up from there because there's new, brand new layers, right? So we're approaching this very systematically. Then the new layer, you do the same thing, you keep breaking it down. And then you'll find that, hey, I can keep embracing this now. Now I'm getting it and I'm on a flow. The layers are coming off a little easier. Then it'll be like, wow, okay, now I finally feel really great. Then my husband might come to me with something and I won't have any reaction about it. That's when I know I've done it, it's fully gone. And I don't stop until it is. So that's the approach, it's incredibly systematic. And there's an additional piece, one last part. Once you've done that self-assessment, the processing, whatever type of processing works best in that moment, and then consistently coming back to it, make sure you always meditate. Take some time to meditate after a big process, because that's your opportunity to fully connect to another incredible layer of light that Source wants to offer you. And in that state, you can just move out of the way and say, Source, I'm here just to be in you to be you and you be me i am the divine you are the divine we are divine coming into that divinity and just being and when you get to be in that every time you move some big dense piece out you're welcoming qualities of light that are so incredible and it shifts out so much that's why even at a young age i've been able to attain these higher states and i'm telling the truth and you can hear it from the heart that I'm telling the truth, that I'm real, that I'm vulnerable, and that I don't think I'm perfect in any way, but that's how it's done. That's how you're gonna be able to do it. That's how others have done it. And it's not something that I came to learning this all by myself, not at all. I have watched others do it too. And this is how we can do it together. It's the big, huge way. It's not gonna change right now processing and dealing with the shadow in this way is the new earth way of doing it it's the most effective way that i've been able to come across so far and it's easy enough to do every day so i hope that that will be really useful to people oh that was awesome 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 thank you so much and and the thing is like you know people have noticed a, a shift instantly you know just from that that first process and then if you add in the second process and then the meditation and for me meditation is like it's just connecting with spirit you know yeah. just being you know and um and that alone is uh, such a gift for yourself too because you are embodying more light when you're just being you're embodying more light when you're being and receiving mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and everybody that. just embodied more light just now exactly <laughs> right how beautiful is that <laughs> i know it's wonderful Really yeah, no, and, and, and you're right. This is something that we have to do consistently every day. You can't just do something once and that's it. Maintaining and raising our vibration, bringing in more light, letting go or clearing the shadow, working with the shadow. That ha it's a, it's a everyday thing. You know, it's not just once in a while. I mean, I don't go searching for <laughs> stuff to clear. Uh, to be honest, I don't go searching for it. It just shows up. It's like, oh my god, you know. So it's like, yeah, oh. for most of it, it's like, oh man, right now I'm just so mad. Holy cow, there it goes. <laughs> right, and then you look at it and you do a process, and 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 the the one that you shared was it, it is so easy. So for those of you who are watching or listening, and you didn't get a chance to write it down, watch this again. <laughs> Listen to this again, right? So that you can do it on your own and just you know it doesn't have to be complicated you know like it was two minutes maybe maybe two minutes right 
So it's yeah, at the most. Yeah, yeah. at the most. I'm doing so, this constantly, pretty much at this point. Yeah, yeah we, we can all do that every day. Yeah, it becomes second nature. It's a lifestyle. It's a yeah. way of being. It's a way of being. It's 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 an equation, right? Because if we're scientists, we're looking for that measurable result. That measurable result is that you don't react to that ever again. Mm -hmm. And it happens. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. Well, I, I was telling somebody, you know, recently, it's like, you know, I was recalling, you know, in the, the past traumas, right? Past stuff, challenges that I had. It's like, oh, and as I was recalling them, sometimes I totally forget. And it's like, oh, yeah, 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 I used to have some. But it's like, there's absolutely no charge. I say, oh, my God, that is so awesome. <laughs> there's <Absolutely>. no charge. <laughs> you yeah. know, and when you get to that point where you don't even remember, <laughs> what it was you know it's like okay yay i think i think i did good with that one you know so um absolutely it, it is possible. there's a really good point around that alara because sometimes at the bottom of a thread you'll find oh boy there's a really traumatized version of me mm -hmm. or oh boy there's a terrible program i learned and we'll approach them the exact same way you embrace and you welcome that traumatized version of you and and in my way of doing healing for frozen children or healing on traumatized selves is that we give them a new place to be so you ask them hey what do you really need and this is again a very simple technique hey what do you really need or, or what i'll do i'll start out asking myself okay so it might be my eight-year-old self what is she wearing mentally in the in the human brain if someone is wearing something different than you then the brain doesn't say oh that's just a reflection of me it says the opposite oh that doesn't look like me and so we're separating ourselves from that traumatized version of us subconsciously they didn't actually go anywhere in time they're still there so we're really working with them and we say what do you really need so what are you wearing and then i see that okay come and talk to me what do you really need and hear them they're going to have real specific things that they need and then we'll say where can we go to get these needs met and you'll imagine up something completely new you can imagine a maybe it's the same house but your your parents are enlightened or i'll give a few examples um, one beautiful client put her teenage self on a spaceship just above the earth because she didn't want to go too far, but the spaceship could read her mind. <laughs> um, that was where she needed to be. She needed to be fully allowed to be exactly who she is without having to explain herself. So we created a place for that. Um, another person took all her traumatized versions of herself, like all her child selves, and put them on a new planet with a brand new father who adores them all and takes care of all of them. Um, there's people who simply built a beautiful place in their backyard, a magnificent place just of their own and not letting any of the details get away. What, do you, what are the colors that are used? What are the smells? What are the feelings that happen? What are the activities that are going on? And you really are literally creating a fourth dimensional spiritual new place for that traumatized self to be. And then when you start interacting with that place alongside them, that little version of you or that even a big version of you is going to start to feel better. And then you can ask them, how do you feel? I feel really good. I feel really happy. I'm getting my needs met. Would you like to stay here? And usually they'll say yes. And then we say, excellent this is your place you can stay here forever and what will happen is that subconscious self is no longer pounding on the back of your head trying to get your attention to get their needs met right they're not doing that anymore they're busy going and having fun and then when you go back and you look at your timeline and you look at those events around maybe for me like when i was eight or something there's no charge anymore because that spiritual version of me got her needs met now I can value all the crazy stuff that happened when I was eight and value it in a brand new way. So that's a method of dealing with a traumatized selves. And then sometimes at the end of the thread, you're gonna find a negative program. And I have another easy way to deal with that. 
So programs will run a lot. You'll hear programs run in your head and you'll be like, wow, where did that come from? Some of them are really horrible, like you're just worthless or whatever. And some of them seem like beliefs, but they're not. It's sort of like, you know, I know, for example, my grandmother, she was very racist. And so her framework of thinking, her program that she was running all the time, whenever she would see anyone with darker skin than her, she would say, well, they're not safe. That was a program that she got programmed into her mindset at a very young age. They're not safe. And so if I was to approach my grandmother, who is probably here with me in the ethers now listening, saying, yeah. Um, <laughs> if I was to approach my grandmother and say, well, how can we erase that program? Every time she'd hear it come up, you would bow to it. Why would we do that to such a horrible program? Well, the brain is funny because the brain works in binary. It works in zeros and ones, but the zeros are neutrality and the ones are reactions. And the brain can't tell the difference between a negative or a positive reaction. You hear that come up, well, I'm not safe. And then you react to it and the brain says, oh, she reacted, that must be useful. <laughs> Because why would, why would that happen? Well, our very, very ancient beginning ancestors were living in, in an environment that doesn't exist anymore. And in this environment, that constant feedback was happening. So if you were reacting to something, it was usually evolutionarily very valuable. But now we're in environments that, again, it, it, even though that environment doesn't exist anymore, these environments never have existed before either. And now we're trying to have that same biological function work in a matrix system that's meant to keep you as a slave, which is why those negative programs exist at all. And they're simply there to help you continue to be a good slave. So how do we pause the program so we can erase it? Neutrality, and one of the best neutrality energies is gratitude. So we say, thank you, negative program. Thank you for trying to help me. I am the soul in charge. I have a different plan. And my plan is to accept and surrender into what is beautiful and what is now, or to be happy, or whatever. It doesn't have to be complicated. So for perhaps for my grandmother, it could be that I have the ability to be safe. I have the ability to be safe. I can make sure that I'm safe or something like that. I'm safe because I'm always taken care of by the universe no matter what, even if I die. Something great that's gonna help her feel better and that we're gonna shift that belief out of the way or that program out of the way. So that means that simply you can be doing that. And, and at first when you have a program run, it's not an instant fix because the bio biology of the body has to work in tandem with a lot of different things to make that happen. But once that command is in place and the body starts recognizing, she stopped reacting to this. It's no longer useful. She wants us to do this other thing. Then it's going to do that. You, I've even had people say, and I felt it too, I can feel my, it happen in my brain. I can feel my brain rewire that negative program and many of us do um, and so what will happen then is again neutral thank you so much i require you to shut down now i'm the soul in charge and i have a new plan and then you name the plan and then you take a big deep breath <sighs> now you might have to do that a hundred times a day at first but then the next day it's going to be 80 times the next day it's going to be 60 times and in a matter of days, it's going to be gone entirely, and you'll never hear it again. And having had so many negative programs myself, my mind was like a noisy cacophony of hatred, especially self-hatred. My mind is so calm and quiet now. I, I love it. <laughs> it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's, it works. And I never believed that. I, I seriously, Alara, I never believed that I'd get here. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I, had, I, I thought that was all kinds of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, lo I love that because it's like, it's so easy and it's so simple, right? 
but and, and I'm so glad that you said that it's not immediate. You have to do it again and again and again. And I think a lot of times the key is just sometimes being aware of it when it comes up, you know, and catching it, you know, as it comes up. Sometimes we'll miss it, which is fine. But the more times that you are aware of it as it comes up and catch it, awesome. You know, it's like, congratulate yourself. Yay, I got it. Whether you exactly. react or not, it doesn't matter at that point. Right? You caught it. You were aware of it. Yeah. And then, you know, continue to, to, to do that. But a lot of times, you know, we, we beat ourselves up for doing it again, you know, like reacting again, doing the same pattern again. But, you know, and so instead of that, it's like each time that you catch it without reacting, yay, yay, this yeah. time I caught it, yay. This time, and you if know. you find yourself beating yourself up, thank you so much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you for trying to help me. I require you to shut down now. I'm the soul in charge and I have a new plan to be neutral and loving to myself now. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. that's, that's brilliant that's brilliant and you know and it takes it takes being consistent it takes being not vigilant per se but being the witness and being observant yeah. you know yeah, and being it, observant yeah mm -hmm. and and it's about being present you know so instead of just you know everything on being on automatic pilot being totally present with your life like what are you thinking what are you feeling what are you saying and when something comes up you know, I mean, I mean, I say this to my, to my, to my clients all the time. When it comes up, look at it. You have to look at it. You know? <laughs> and sometimes people are like, holy cow, I mean, I'm working full time. I've got a family. I, I don't have time to look at it. Mm. You'll want to carve out a time at the end of your day. If you can't process throughout the day because you're feeling too pulled in too many directions, that's okay. Try to kind of keep tabs on the emotions you want to dig into. Maybe just pick one, you know, just pick one from that day and then go and do a process around it. Go in, welcome it, assess it, welcome it, go and dig into it, find where that thread leads you in that moment, shift it with the techniques we've talked about or other techniques that work for you and then meditate. And all that can be done in 15 minutes. So if you can just carve out 15 minutes at the end of your day, every day to do this, you're on a good start. Mm -hmm. so that's the thing. We got to work with what we have. We've got to work where we're at. You can't, you can't work at a level that you're not at yet because then like a staircase, if you skip steps, you might end up tripping and falling off and then you're at the bottom again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just step by step. It's just like mathematics. You can't do you can't do the complex stuff until you learn all the basics. Yeah. And, and all of us are constantly freshing up on basics. I mean, uh, thank God. Yeah. And there's <laughs> always, there's always something that we can work on. <laughs> to be honest. Yes. There's always something that's coming learn. up, you know, yeah, and we, we are learning, but the thing is when that stuff comes up, you know, don't beat yourself up, you know, like you said, be grateful for it because it is allowing you the opportunity to bring in more light yes right? to embody more light it's giving you the opportunity to see who you are what, where you're at uh, what your patterns are you know what you're reacting to and and embody more light and it's and it's inviting you to be present as well right so i think that's my biggest thing being present because i'm in my head a lot right? yeah, sure. so you know being present being here now right instead of everywhere else so that yes, was brilliant absolutely. thank you I have a way to help people to be here now. I, I have like little tips, easy stuff for the, all kinds of stuff. Time is one of my favorite strange things to look at. So <laughs> humans, we live in this linear time, but that's actually not really how time works at all. And what's cool about time is that everything's already happened. It's just being un un uncovered by each of our strands of conscious luminosity that come from source. So if we can imagine that source is sort of like a sun, perhaps, the heart of the universe where the, the soul consciousness of source comes in to create and manifest the material in the universe, then each of us are simply like a, a ray of light from that. That's a ray of consciousness 
Source is here, to, yes, to learn more about itself, but mainly to answer this question about what is love, because that's what the whole universe is based on, is the harmonic of love. And so this strand of consciousness then comes into our experiences. That's who we are. We, we are that divine strand of consciousness. So the fact is, is we get to then discover time in a linear way, because here we're discovering from that particular viewpoint. And the more fractal viewpoints, the more variety of viewpoints, the more we can answer that question, which is why Source set the universe up like this. So if we can consistently recognize, I'm here to constantly answer that question, what is love and what is not love? and to find that out in my life. That makes, us, that makes sense of a lot of things, but it also helps us to appreciate linear time. So we can't see the future. Yes, I know that people say psychics are supposed to be able to see the, see the future and stuff, and I actually am very against that. We're not meant to. That's a waste of energy, because there's so many billions of possibilities that trying to just pick one and say that's it is that's not a useful it's not useful it's not good for our energy so people worry about the future that's actually a field of limitation that has been programmed into our human race to believe that you must focus in on the future and worry about the future and the past that's a giant waste of energy because you know what a good slave worries about the future. An enlightened sovereign being does not. Instead, what does a sovereign being do? They hang out in the moment because that's where all the cool power is. <laughs> that's where you get to create the future you want. That's where you get to decide what are the steps you're going to take to put velocity behind the timeline you want. So yes, it's smart to think about what timeline you want, but that can change. In fact, it's so fluid at this point for me, for example, that I don't really have like some big, huge, long-term plan that's, that I am attached to. I have a long-term plan that I know is alive and fluid and that I'm constantly co-creating with in the moment, but I don't put all my focus and energy on that. I've put my focus and energy on the very moment where all this power is. So if you can imagine it like an X, Y axis, you have the X axis here, that's linear time. And you know, at the Y axis and that zero point right in the middle, that's actually you. That's where you are at the zero point on the X axis. The y-axis goes up and down, and we'll address that. But that x-axis, you're going to, as a soul, if you're worrying about the future or the past, you're going to leak energy out on that axis on either side. Now, instead, we just bring ourselves back into the moment, and we say, what can I do right now to put power and velocity behind the future that I'm hoping for? What can I do right this moment to help me heal my past so that I won't worry about it anymore? And that brings all your attention back into the moment. Then you get to go somewhere. So you're not just only here in this 3D moment. No, you get to play around on the Y axis. The Y axis is the fun part. That's the zooming in and out of layers of reality. So you have the personal self, right there in the zero point, right in the middle of the y-axis, it turns out that your personal self is just kind of like in the middle of all these layers of reality. But then there's the planetary, you know, the collective. Well, there's lots of layers, but from the self, there might be the family, the town, the region, the state, the nation, the collective, the planet, the solar system the galaxy, the cluster of galaxies, all the way up, right, all the way to the universal level, and then from the personal self downwards, down into your organs. What about your brain and your heart and your gut, your three minds, your organs, down into the cellular, down into the molecular, down into the quantum? That's where the mind of someone who is fully present gets to play. 
way more fun. Join me here. <laughs> wow, I love that. I absolutely that was that was brilliant. And I love how, you know, when you're in the now, you have way more possibilities. Mm -hmm. Right? When you're in the now, you have your, your full power and the access to all these different yes. dimensions, you know, realities, whatever you, whatever you like to call it, right? But, but when you're just in the future and in the past, you're kind of stuck. You're kind of limited, right? Very limited. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing you're always that. The, yeah, I love it. It's one of my favorite cool tools that Source was able to show me. Um, and I'll give you an example too, how you can help your family and friends because a lot of complaints I get is, well, I can think that way, but then everyone else around me doesn't. <laughs> and so I want to give my um, nanny as an example. I live in a tiny town in Kentucky and I never thought I'd live here. I'm from the Seattle area. I'm uh, originally from Olympia, Washington. And so very different culture. And I live here in Kentucky and my nanny's this lovely young woman who really hasn't left this area. She's not very worldly and she doesn't know a lot about, you know, reality and that's okay. And so she's been learning from me and I started to realize that every time we were together, she'd start talking about terrible things that were in her past. And I noticed that it would really drag on me because I just simply couldn't handle it, especially when I'm trying to do um, sessions with other people. When I'm off the clock, I need to be off the clock because my brain like literally will fry. So by the end of the day, I'm like, don't even talk to me. <laughs> like I can't, I can't even, because my brain's my, my main tool. So um, she's talking about all this painful stuff and I, it dawned on me, oh my gosh, she's leaking all this energy into the past. So what I did is I said to her, do you notice that when you talk about these painful things, how your body feels? And she says, yeah, my heart hurts and my stomach hurts. And I said, that's your body trying to let you know that you're causing yourself suffering. And I said, instead, what if we were to ask in this moment, is there anything that you can be doing to help heal what had happened to you? And so we'd go through, you know, processing and, and things like that. And then I said, what if we could play around with a challenge? People like challenges. They maybe make it a game, especially with kids or, or friends. We can say, let's try a game. Every time we get together, we're only allowed to talk about the last 24 hours and the next 24 hours. And you know what? It worked. She hasn't talked about her past at all. Instead, she's processed her stuff and she only talks about the past 24 hours or the next 24 hours. It's now become her new mindset. And every time she's around me, she's incredibly brighter, lighter, full of light because she's so much happier. And one day she came running up to me and gave me this big hug and said, Elizabeth, I looked in the mirror today and for the first time I actually love myself. And that's what being present can do. She finally really learned to love herself by being so present, by recognizing that she didn't have to keep herself in suffering anymore, reliving all the trauma that she'd been going through. That's one of the ways you can help your family and your friends to be with you in the present, just play with them, practice with them. Another way, if maybe you're with someone who's an elder who's not as responsive to that, is that you might mirror back to them a very present way of recognizing what they're complaining about. So I'll use another example. My mother-in-law, she's suffered a lot and she will often talk about the painful things that have happened. When she's doing this, at one point, I looked at her and I said, mom, because I call her mom, mom, you really value justice. You value justice and fairness above all things, don't you? I took the basis of what her suffering really was that I could hear. She had been treated unfairly. She had been treated unjustly. Other people around her had been treated unfairly and unjustly and it hurt her. So I took that foundation of what I could hear and I brought it to the present. You feel 
that fairness and justice are incredibly important. That is what you value the most, isn't it? I brought her back to the moment. And then we just sat there loving fairness and loving justice. And she, she didn't complain anymore that day because she was acknowledged in the moment and we could just play in the moment together from then on. It really was a game changer to be able to show that to her, mirror it to her in the moment, and suddenly all that light came pouring through. She wasn't leaking energy anymore. She got to just be present and be acknowledged and validated. So those are the ways we can help our family and friends get real about time, right? <laughs> get oh, in the present. Yeah. That was lovely. Absolutely. And that's the thing. It's like sometimes, you know, we have to use little circuitous routes to get everybody else kind of like on board. Right. So that we, so that it's easier on us too. Right. Yeah, exactly. Cause it can be really frustrating. Some folks suffer with a lot of judgment and they have a really hard time because they feel like I'm just surrounded in people who don't get it. And like my husband thinks I'm crazy or my wife thinks I'm crazy or, you know, my family thinks I'm nuts. I'm the black sheep, blah, blah, blah. And we can really kind of get tossed up in that. But here's the cool part about being the one who's actually not a black sheep, but perhaps the shining light, the one who's awake, right? Is that we're there to help our lineage. We're there to help our friends. We're one of the special seven generations that come along every once in a while to come clean things up. That's all of us. All of you on this call are part of that. If you're listening to this, that's you. And so that's what we're here to do with compassion, with neutrality, and be able to approach the people around us and keep working on ourselves because that is the number one way you're going to find a big difference in the people around you. And I have to attest to this because I got set up for success on this one. I got surrounded in an incredible, gigantic family. I have six nephews. I have three children. So there's nine grandchildren. Then there's my six siblings and my two parents. I'm surrounded in these people incredible amounts of people. Then I married into a family too. Them too, all my cousins, all the it's a huge amount of people, right? And I have literally witnessed my entire family shift into more light, into more empowerment, into more grace and compassion because of the work I did on me. Now, do they necessarily don't get credit? No, no, no. But I ended up happening to, happening to be the catalyst, mainly because I'm, I'm kind of the core of my family. I was able to help take care of my parents and take care of my siblings. And, you know, we, we all took care of each other. But at the same time, I acted as a nexus for a very, very long time being the oldest. I helped homeschool all my siblings. I did a lot to be present with my parents and my family. And they have gained a lot from me being able to work with them on this stuff. And they trust me now. They didn't used to trust me with this stuff, but now they've seen how I've got better, how I'm a better person. They used to know me back when I was an alcoholic wanting to commit suicide. And they've watched me literally rise out of the ashes to be the enti entirely, something they never imagined, something I never imagined. And then they said, well, I want that. <laughs> Elizabeth's so happy. I want that. And they said, how? How do we be happy too? And now they trust me. And because I was able to work on that, now we've built that trust, that compassion, and they too have changed. Oh, that's awesome. And that's the thing. It's like when you start to work on yourself, you know, people are going to notice because you, you're, you're, you're shifting, you're changing, you're shifting, and your family, your friends are going to notice. And if, you know, if they want help, you know, you're always there, but yes. you've become like a role model for them, right? And, 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 and yes. for, your, for your community. That's right. We act as role models then if we're awake. Um, and, and we don't let people call us black sheeps anymore. That's not, <laughs> we'll say, no, no, I'm, I'm the sheep that's bioluminescent and glows in the dark. <laughs> I love that. A bioluminescent <laughs> sheep, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not black. Look at me. I'm a shining light. Come on. Right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. 
Neo, bring that onto the carpet. <laughs> the puppy's playing with a toy and it's making a little bit of noise on the floor. So it's like, that's okay. <laughs> now that's brilliant. Um, all right, how's everybody doing? It's so much information, right? Yeah, bioluminescent. Yes, we are bioluminescent sheep, but not really. Sheep. <laughs> we're, bi we're bioluminescent beings of light. You yeah, know. we're stars. We're superstars. Yeah, because it's like, I don't, I, a sheep follow. I'm not a follower. <laughs> right? so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, precisely. Right? Yeah. Um, no, this was, this was so brilliant. And, you know, so many people have said, thank you so much for bringing Elizabeth to the show because they're just so enjoying this conversation as well as the, the, the processes that you shared with us. Um, I love sharing it too. Thank you. Yeah, you know, thank you so much. I'm, I'm so glad. And I wanted to take a moment um, to talk a little bit about the, the special offer that you have for us. And especially now, since we've, we've, you know, we've gotten to know you, you know, so well yes. <laughs> in this conversation. So um, I don't have it pulled up in front of me. Would you mind um, naming off the items on there and I'll describe them a little bit? Yep. So the, there, this package has um, a few items on it. I think I said eight or something like that. I'm going to put the link in the chat here as well. Um, but it's at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Elizabeth. And if you're on the live page, you can just click on special offer, right? And so what we have here is a one-year subscription to the Circle Monthly Call. And then there's five advanced workshops and a bonus call and a meditation music by Bioluminescence. That's my husband's music, yes. Mm -hmm. I have a favor for that particular word. But yes, so the one-year... Um, circle call is really special because I have been able to create this open door community to all who want to come in and check in every month. And it actually kind of started as an accident. I was doing an interview with a friend and she couldn't show up at the last minute. So I had all these people on this call, like 50 people on a call. And I said, well, why don't we just check in? How are you really doing? this is how I'm doing. And then I start talking about all the crazy stuff going on in my life, how it ties into um, how it'll tie into, for example, uh, more, more collective stuff. You know, one thing as you learn, as you zoom in and out folks is that you'll find that your, um, your stuff, your junk and your life will actually be tied to other layers of reality and that you'll always be able to notice that and so that's one really great thing about staying present because you can zoom in and out of reality and notice that your stuff going on is not just you <laughs> it's not just all about you and your experience and you then feel that sense of oneness but in that circle call that first one it was so profound. I had an incredible amount of feedback from people saying, I just feel really loved in your space of non-judgment. Thank you so much for being able to help hold a space so I can just be me and then tie it back to big, cool layers of reality. And so that's what we do every month. It's very special. And it's for two hours. We get to talk about our intentions, updates, get we get to talk about what you're going through, answer questions, whatever we want. It's very beautiful. I love it. It's probably my favorite thing that we've been doing. And then um, we also have uh, those, those five classes, including the bonus call that comes along with it. Um, and I can see the screen up, Alara. Will you scroll down? Can you name off the classes for me? I was, I, I'm so sorry. I can't always memorize my no, no, that's okay. But I was going to say, can you, can, can you guys see my screen or not? Because it's like, oh, maybe you can't even see my screen because, you know. I could. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but nobody else could. So it's like, um, it's like give me. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> and some, I, I, I can usually figure it out. But for today, for some reason, my mind is just not working. So it's like, all right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to. Oh yeah, you, oh yeah, they can they can all see. Yeah, it. Okay. yeah people were saying yes. Okay, okay cool. good. All right, let me put it back up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I try to. I've taught over three hundred classes, so I can't always remember exactly what I put together. <laughs> ah, yes. So hey, if you want to go deep into this time piece and really get really deep, 
Um, I just gave you a little tidbit about what's in this class, the playground of time. And this workshop's profound because you're going to be able to use it over and over and over again. Um, it really gives a lot more depth to these ideas around time that I was just expressing, and that was only just a small portion. Um, that was just a dipping your toe in it. By the end of that workshop, you'll not be the same because your, per, your envisionment and your functioning in time will be completely new. And it can be a very big game changer for people. Sometimes time is one of the trickiest things. People have a hard time with it, um, ironically. <laughs> but then once we have the right foundation and we get to practice it with easy things that you can be playing with, then you'll end up having a big shift around that. I think that'll be very helpful and useful to all of you. Good, and then, then we have the equations of enlightenment. So there are very specific equations that if you implement them, some of them are physical, some of them are actual equations, like 369, um, and some of them are sort of functional equations, like if you do this and this, then this will happen, right? So if then, or this plus this equals this. But we discover three specific equations that when implemented create much higher states of consciousness. So that's the second workshop. I really loved teaching that one. Very profound, beautiful info, all very practicable, right? So easy to implement. Um, soul skill sets is one of the most fun things I really like to talk about because those strands of luminosity, those strands of consciousness that you are, those strands all have skill sets with them. So for example, my strand of consciousness, I'm an oracle, which is an advanced level of psychic. There's always beginner, middle ground, advanced. And all of us have, have chances to advance our soul skill sets, especially if we know what they are. So mine, I'm an oracle, I'm a healer, and I'm a warrior. And these are energetics, these are pieces of my soul that I've carried through many, many lifetimes and that I function with. And so advancing our soul skill sets can be very profound. But there's also a way for us to access all soul skill sets. I give you that key. I show you how to get access to the whole library so you can play in the entire library of skill sets. And it is not what you think. And I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> um, and then we have a really great class. I just love this. It's the 12 dimensional body. It's how to understand the 12 dimensions and embody them, welcome them, what they're going to do to your body when you do that. And the interesting thing is that each of us, while we have a unique experience, there are some foundational things you can expect. And so that class is really going to help you to understand full multidimensional embodiment from a very scientific viewpoint. And then um, there, that soul skill sets class, by the way, there's a, a bonus call. And so the bonus call comes for that, it's actually a call that just helps you to assess which soul skill sets are yours because you can find that out by tapping into your embodiment. And I discuss exactly how to do that on that bonus call. And then we have the class around healing polarities. We've talked a lot about polarities today and how amazing they can be at helping us to shift. Polarities act like big hamster wheels, right? So, like, for example, um, worthlessness and arrogance. For so long, I was so arrogant. Oh my gosh, it's crazy how arrogant I, I was for so long. <laughs> and then I would feel bad about it, or I, or maybe one of my teachers would be call me out on it, right? And then I'd bounce into worthlessness. And it's like a hamster wheel. You just never can find a way out of that polarity. And we have so many polarities we work with. And so many polarities that lock up different parts of our body, right? This class is about how to heal those polarities. How do you get off the hamster wheel? I give you exactly how to do that in this class. And it's really a beautiful class that you can use over and over again. 
and discover this incredible myriad of polarities. Um, and then of course, music from my husband, he's a really good musician. And in fact, I fell in love with him through his music first. We didn't even meet at all. I was listening only to his music and like texting him and talking to him on the phone for a month. And I, he takes people on these expansive journeys. And if you go into these meditations with his music, it's like a new place. He creates these fourth dimensional places that are all made of sound. And I love it. And so I wanted to share it with you because I love it so much. <laughs> Good. That's great. And I just, I'm so excited to share this with you. I think all of you will enjoy it very much. It's a curated little group of things that I think will work best for folks. And because, as you can tell, I pack in a lot of info, it's really good to have them as recordings to listen to them again and again. I actually had someone purchase that Soul Skill Sets class just the other day. She's listened to it twice in a matter of a few days. And she said, the first time I got something completely different than I got the second time. It's because it's packed full of light. Everything I do, and as you can tell, I'm weaving light into everything I do. Everything I say is woven with light. Everything that I, my face, my eyes, everything I write, anything that I teach, it's all woven with light. It's got a lot of info that's not just 3D scientific info. It's also got multidimensional info. So having those recordings around to play with can be very activating. They can be transformational. They can be clearing they can be replacing with light so i think that they'll be especially useful right now this is all new stuff it's not old so you're not getting old news we're keeping up to date we're keeping up with the times and um i just curated it for you affordable making sure you can have access to it now okay. and so i'm so glad to do that thank you alara Oh, thank you. And it's awesome. And the package looks awesome. Um, and, you know, it's like so many ways to play with it and so many ways to use those processes in our lives to, you know, help us to move forward and help us to be empowered and be in our power, be in the present moment. Oh, I just, oh, yeah, I just love it. And I'm so looking forward to listening to some of the music. It's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. Most people, mo if you don't have to have a particular genre you're into. This is very meditative. It takes you on a beautiful journey, and I sure. know people love it. Yeah, exactly. And so it is available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Elizabeth. And there is a two payment plan option available if you require it. Um, and yeah, lots of information, lots of information in the package and lots of information again during this call. So you definitely want to re-listen, re-watch, right? And I'm glad that, you know, <laughs> those are recordings that people can re-listen again, because sometimes you're right. You don't catch everything the first time. You know, you, you get something new each time you hear it. And, um, and, and it's not just about the words, but it's about the energy, right? And, and it's about the light that, that you're transmitting as well as you're speaking, as you're teaching, as you're sharing. And all of that is if we can receive the fullness of that, it's not just the 3D words, you know. Um, exactly. It's, it's way more than that. So thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, some people will transmit light through their eyes. Like my teacher, she does transmissions of light and they're beautiful, but she does it through her eyes. Some will transmute it through music, perhaps like my husband. Mm -hmm. I transmute it by teaching. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And same, you know, like I, I do the same thing when I'm working, you know, it's like, yeah, and it just happens. So it's through, it's through the voice, it's through your eyes, it's through the hands, it's through your entire being. When you're actually in the flow, it's through your entire being, right? It's not anything specific. It just flows through you. So, uh, yeah. you know, and, and of course, you know, people, I don't, I, I don't know if people still ask this, but of course, all that energy is encoded in the recordings, of course, right? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> there's no, there's no nothing like that that it's not. Um, anybody have any? I know we've gone a little bit long, a little bit over, but I was just gonna ask if anybody had any burning question. Yeah, um, let's, let's take a couple of questions. I love doing live <laughs> questions. Because <laughs> I know we had some in the in like way long time ago, but if somebody has any brand new questions, <laughs> I think Elizabeth has basically covered all of that stuff. 
Um, there was one thing that I saw that was uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, something that I saw. I didn't remember what it was. I'm sorry. Because um, it's been so awesome and amazing. I don't know. So if anybody <laughs> has a new question, because I can't see it. Susan, did you want to unmute yourself or I can unmute you? You have your hand raised. I can go ahead. Hello. Ladies. Hi. Hi, Susan. How are you? So good. good. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Hello. So nice to see you. Mm -hmm. You are glowing with love and light today, Miss. Thank you. Um, when did you sense that we were on not on a 5D journey, but a 9D journey? Was there a specific point in time that you got that? that energetic message or just a feel? Yeah, I can describe that. So this is actually 2017 was the solstice. 2017, there was a really amazing alignment that happened that, I mean, we had an incredible amount of help with this, by the way, um, that shifted the, the structural, the spiritual 4D structural matrix off the earth, right? So it was solstice 2017 when the earth started to fully be able to embody the fourth and fifth dimension. And then we experienced okay. 5D coming online full blown 20, 2018, 2017. And then it was this past solstice, this past December solstice 2018, when she decided to up level it all the way up to the eighth dimension. And honestly, when we talk about dimensions, they didn't go anywhere. They didn't go anywhere. But embodiment's one thing, and that's what she's done. So she said, hey, things aren't happening fast enough, and so I'm going to blow up this whole timeline. I'm going to do something that wasn't going to be expected for, you know, like I said, about a thousand years. Yes. Yeah. And so she said, all right, I'm embodying six, seven, eight, and nine. Blam. And it was, it was so big yet so subtle because everyone usually looks for f changes in form. And what happened, right. in, what happened in the solstice was everyone, it was a personal choice. Everyone got to make a personal choice. Am I going to be part of this new earth or not? Oh, okay. And so I actually felt it. I felt it's quite, I, I kind of describe it as like your personal card deck got shuffled, right? And some cards got got taken out and some new ones got put in. And all of this happened in incredible formlessness. So she's, she's still getting real comfortable in the 8D at the moment and has allowed, since the, this last equinox, has allowed this another, another layer of what we might call um, the fields of limitlessness there's specific fields of limitation that we have programmed into us. And now we're being ushered into fields of limitlessness that are opposite. So that'll give us back our sovereignty. First was Christ consciousness and mercy. And that was in 2017. Now it's the high heart of unconditional love. And so that's going to be brilliant. I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> That is so freaking awesome. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. That's a good question because the timing's interesting. And if you go back over the past couple of years and you look at what's happened to you, mm -hmm. sometimes it can match right up. Absolutely. Yeah. And when I, when I look back at, at my timelines, yeah, I can definitely see the shift. And I, I felt the shift within my own being of what's, what's coming next. You know, like something, something is shifting and changing. Something is moving. And, you know, and I, I've changed since then. Um, so Donna had a question, and I hope I say it properly. Would you ask, Elizabeth, if we have to go through the intense emotional work, like in years past, processing work that seemed arduous? So I think what you're asking, Donna, is do you need to go deep into each emotion and dig down into it? Yep. <laughs> that's a short answer here's why it seems arduous because it seems like there's a lot there right and like i want to use an archaeological site as another example or maybe even better a giant house full of junk 
So a giant house full of junk, you're, you know, once you've awakened, you realize, oh my gosh, I'm in a giant house full of junk. And so then you're like, wow, this is a lot of work. And you start to try to shift stuff one bag at a time, one object at a time. Don't do that. That's too, that's, that's not, that you're not going to get very far very quickly. Instead, look at things that are all general. So like, let's say you keep finding patterns of worthlessness and arrogance like I do. In my junk, I keep finding the same pattern, worthlessness and arrogance, all the time. Focus in on that. It's sort of like taking a big magnet and saying, Anything that has to do with this polarity, I'm attracting right now because I'm working on it now. Then like a whole big, huge room full of stuff can be dealt with at a time. That's how you can do this a bit faster. But yes, you need to spend the arduous time, the dedicated time, the disciplined time, really going into this, welcoming those really painful emotions and finding out what's at the bottom of them so you can unplug it. Now, here's the cool thing. Just like in archaeology, right, and I said this earlier, but this applies. Just like in archaeology, it takes a lot less time to move all that dirt and junk out of the way than it did for it to get there. Your personal work in a matter of weeks or months can be incredibly life-changing. I know that it seems arduous now because you're looking at this house full of junk, but Source is on the doorstep with a truckload of grace saying, please just make room. Just move stuff out of that one room and I'll fill it with light for you. One room at a time. Fill it with light. Replace it with light. You will feel a difference. And then one day it's going to be like, okay, I got this. I got this. It's not going to be arduous anymore. So I want you to dig down deep, Donna. You've been through a lot. You've dug into this stuff for a long time. This is not new. Okay? You know that. But all the things you've been trying to do, they haven't been giving you the big massive results you want. So now it's frustrating, and now you're hearing someone say, you still got to do the work. You still got to be disciplined. And it's frustrating. Dig into that emotion. That's arduous. What is underneath that arduous feeling? Is it the frustration that you weren't able to get some of the results you wanted when other people did? Is it the suffering that you've continued to incur in your life even though you keep doing such hard work look into that dig down into that particular feeling of this is too much work and find the plug at the bottom that's the biggest favor i can say to you right now because in the end all that beautiful junk all the junk that you've shifted, that's going to be replaced with beautiful white, and you will get your measurable results. But don't give up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up on this. You can't. That's what we're here to do. And you'll finally get the embodiment results you desire, the expansiveness, the joy. You'll get all of that. You will get it. It's a promise. I know that you can. So I'm speaking to you, Donna, and everybody on this call. If you feel that sense of arduousness and that this is too much work, dig into it. There's a reason why that feeling's coming up and it's blocking you. And that's okay. That's okay. Believe me. Because <laughs> at one point, I was like, there's no way. There's no way that I'm ever going to get there. When I finally saw other people getting there, and I, I'd never really seen people get to that point. And, but then I was surrounded in people who, who had, and they'd said, well, I've meditated for 50 straight years to get here. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't do that. And yet, here I am. I, you can, you can. And meditation's part of it, yes. Taking five, 10 minutes out of your day. Just do one little thing, one little thing at a time. Look for the patterns and tackle the big patterns. And then you're going to move more junk all out at once, not one object at a time. 
not one nasty emotion at a time. So I hope that helps because I know how you feel, but underneath the arduousness, there's something there that wants to move, some kind of pain around not getting the results you want and watching other people get them. And you deserve to be able to have compassion deep within yourself for that and unplug it finally so you can be free to feel the joy of this work. Actually, I'm today having just experienced that with my husband, for example, I feel so much joy around being able to discover that I was so attached to his outcome still. And I'm, and every time I get to look at it now, I'm like, yes, another big room full of junk to move. I get excited now. And this is how doing this can be done with joy. Then the arduousness is gone because now I'm really excited. I get to move this out of the way. What's it going to mean that I get to love more unconditionally and that my husband can be experiencing that and changing in it too. It's going to happen for everybody around me. You'll get those results. Don't give up. Wow, beautiful. Thank you. Thank tough you, talk. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> tough talk. <laughs> and then Melissa has a question about, she says, why do I feel so different from most beings in this reality as of late? Sometimes, whoops, sometimes, actually, most of the time, things seem foreign here, hard to explain. Am I just less embodied? It feels like I'm more connected to other realities. Even when I close my eyes, I see myself experiencing a whole different life. Yeah, I think that many of us feel that way. I often get people saying, hey, I don't feel at home here. I don't feel at home here. This isn't my home. And I want to point something out. The soul has a very separate history than the body. So when we come into these bodies, we are really actually beings of light that inhabit these bodies. These bodies originally were not Homo sapiens. They were Homo erectus. And then us as these souls from a whole nother dimension, you know, from these higher dimensions, from these experiential dimensions like the 4D, we came and we entered into these bodies and then they changed into Homo sapien. But that's the thing is that we all are from other places. It's okay to play around experiencing all of those different things. The fact is, is that then you can learn. You can learn from doing meditation and psychically playing in different realms and then bringing the things you learned back to the material world. So here's a mindset shift for you. For those of you who don't feel at home here on earth in these bodies, that's okay. I want you to welcome that. When's the last time you actually said, hey, that's okay? We keep being told, oh, we have to embody, embody, embody. That doesn't mean you're going to feel at home. <laughs> that's a whole different emotion. Being embodied is one thing, but that's grounding stuff you've learned as a soul into reality, into the material 3D reality. That's what embodiment really is. It's being able to have the physical effects of higher consciousness happen in your body and in the 3D realm. Now, as you practice playing in different realms, take the lessons and the pieces you've experienced and the joy and the happiness you have from those pieces, and then ask yourself every day, how can I take those and allow them to move through the things that I'm cooking? How can I do that and play with those lights and those energies and bring them into me when I'm taking a shower, when I'm brushing my teeth, when I'm vacuuming, when I'm taking care of so-and-so, how can I take those lessons and those energies and then bring them into what I'm doing? How can you weave them into this reality? That's actually what you're supposed to be doing. It didn't, the, the fine print didn't say, and you will feel at home here. That's not what the fine print said, and most of us didn't read the fine print. <laughs> but the, the fine print says, you're all from somewhere else anyway, and you're all coming down into this embodiment so that in your, through your personal experiences, you can be helping the whole of humanity to shift so that 
Mother Earth and her full experiment around love can be understood. That's why you're here. And I'm so glad you are. Because we need all types. We need the humanist of the humans. And we need the fairiest of the fairies. And we need the Pleiadians and the Syrians and the Lyrans and the Arcturians. We need everybody to get this done. And through these bodies. Absolutely. So that's Here. my aunt. Mia wants to say hello. <laughs> Hi, Pupper. Mia. Oh, hello. <laughs> He's like, oh, Mommy, look at those cats. Mommy's still working. Mommy's still working. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had a question from Loa. Oh, sorry. There was another one before that. Sorry. Uh, what was it? Linda so as asking, are we experiencing parallel lives? I never felt at home here either. No, not necessarily. I think when people are, here's the thing. These lives are multidimensional, y'all. <laughs> the dimensions didn't go anywhere. We keep talking about dimensions as if they're like gone somewhere and that we have to find them again. And that's not, that's not what's happening. You've always been a multidimensional, a 12 dimensional being who has 12 dimensions of DNA, who have 12 dimensions of consciousness, who has access to all of that. You didn't stop doing that. What's happened is that when we come into these bodies, they're very dense. Remember, the body has its own history. It's full of junk. You get here, and if you're lucky to wake up enough and recognize that you've got all this density, in the DNA, well, that makes it really hard to remember much, right? Because it's full of a lot of junk. So when you've shifted all the junk out of the way, there's all this light, and then you get to remember, oh, yeah, I am all these dimensions already. I'm already source. I didn't stop being source. Part of what happens to you as you process and as you heal the shadow on New Earth is you begin to remember more. One of the things that I can attest to is that I remember my past lives like yesterday and I can learn from them and I bring and I value all that now in the present in ways I couldn't before. That's because of the processing. It's only because of the processing that I was able to attain that. So if you want to remember, that's fine. If you're already experiencing those multidimensional aspects, they're not parallel, they're not separate, they're all one thing. That's your strand of luminosity experiencing reality. And in that, you're going to remember more of where you've been as a soul. You're going to experience multidimensional things that aren't going on in the 3D, but that you can ground into the 3D through your experiences and your manifestation in the 3D. Mani manifestation, manu means hands. You don't manifest by just imagining and tapping into those realms of light, you manifest by using your body to weave them into the 3D. So that's the job. That's what you signed up for. You signed up to be a many, many multidimensional being experiencing this experience in a physical body so you could discover what is love and what is not love and be able to give that information back to the source field on behalf of the whole universe so when you heal something that information goes to the source field to all the dimensions to heal it it doesn't just stay in your little body it goes out to all the rest of the edges of the universe and so you didn't stop being that way you're just learning that you are that way and that that's okay that you're supposed to have all these interesting multiple dimensional experiences all the time and live in a 3d body that's the job awesome thank you and then lois has asked i mean really wonderful wonderful questions and wonderful answers thank you um lois is asking can you speak to the dark night of the soul experience yeah, that's what my husband just said earlier. He said, I'm going through a dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. You know, those are, so I'll describe mine. Um, at one point, my PTSD was so bad that I was hallucinating. 
which is very different than seeing, psychic seeing. I was hallucinating. My brain was so traumatized that it was hallucinating. And I was trying to finish college, trying to finish my master's degree. And I was hallucinating. I had heart palpitations. I had fight or flight. I had to drink a bottle of wine every night to go to sleep. I was taking about 1600 milligrams of ibuprofen every day just to function because I was in so much physical pain from the trauma being held in my body. I had gone to 14 different therapists, including doctors, all of whom told me they couldn't help me. And I was ready to die. That's what my dark night of the soul looked like. And I said, the only reason I'm here is because I have a son. So thankfully I had a child because I wouldn't be here. And I said, I got to get out of this somehow. I can't live anymore. So I have to somehow get out. Now, down deep in the depths of that hole, it's sort of like being a, in a hole. And it seems really dark down there. It seems like you're totally separated from everything, isolated. The first thing that I realized was that was an illusion, that I wasn't separated. Now I'm lucky because I happen to have a mind that thinks like that. And I'm always thinking in terms of quantum because I can see it, but not everybody can see that. So I knew that in the hole I had to get out somewhere. So I, I just needed somebody not to give up on me. And I did find a therapist that said swore that he wouldn't give up on me and he didn't even though I was a pain in the ass for six months he still didn't give give up on me and he said I'm not gonna give up on you and one day he was crying and I was like just looking at him like why are you crying and I asked him I was kind of being mean I was like why are you crying and he's like somebody's gotta cry like this this story sucks like your life has sucked this is bad and you're in pain and I'm sad and, 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 and now I'm crying because somebody's got to cry. And he, he's like, why don't you cry when you're in therapy sessions? And I'm like, I cry all the time. I don't want to cry with you. And he said, well, what exactly do you need from me? And it dawned on me. I don't want you to go into the maze with me. I want you to look up above the maze. I want you to be objective with me and show me what tools I need so that when I go back down into my life, when I leave this session, that I can actually use the tools effectively for the things that we objectively see that are a problem. And it was like a huge, massive breakthrough. And at that point, I was still suffering so much. and. It was a massive breakthrough. Then for six months more, we worked really hard on, on, on that objectivity. He gave me the tools that he had that were the best he had, and I modified them. And I want to tell you, the tools I've taught you today are exactly the same tools. And I was able to cure myself of PTSD. I cured myself. I don't have any post-traumatic stress disorder anymore. None. I was able to finally be happy and completely shift my whole life. But I want to give you a metaphor. That's what the hard work can do for you as you continue to get out of the hole. But you're not going to climb out of the hole and leave the hole behind. And here's why. I want to show you the difference. Instead, you're going to raise yourself up from the foundation up out of that hole. You're going to raise yourself up out of there. Here's how. The source field is sort of like a giant white sheet, right? That's an oversimplification, I know. But if we can imagine it as like a big white sheet, that's source. That includes all the universes. But in this case, it's just one white sheet. Here's all these marbles. These are consciousness, maybe, right? These are people. And here's one marble. This was me that we're talking about. Dark Knight of the Soul. Really heavy marble, metal marble, maybe. Really heavy, really dense with trauma, really dense with despair, with 
depression, fear, anxiety, and attachments, expectations, and resistance, you name it, arrogance, incredible junk, worthlessness, wretched. Super heavy. If you put that little marble out on the sheet, what's it going to do? It's going to create a dent in the sheet, right? And in that dent, it's sort of like being in a hole. It's horrible. There's no light down there. But the fact is, you didn't ever leave the source field. It just seems like it because you're in that dense hole where the light can't really get in very well. It's too dense. Not even using the word dark at this point, just dense. Trauma's dense. It sucks. It's heavy. You, people name it. Like people will say, I have lead weights around my feet. I feel like I'm underwater. I'm oppressed. I feel heavy. Literally, trauma and suffering and ego, these are dense. That's why it feels heavy. Then you have someone over here who's been doing self assessment, processing, meditating all the time. They've been doing a lot of that work. They're see through. They're, they're lightweight. When you put them on the source field, they don't make a dent. In fact, you can barely even tell they're there because all you see is the source field. <laughs> all you see is the sheet, the white sheet, all that light coming through. You can't even see them on there anymore. That's what we're working towards. That's oneness. But how do you get there? What will happen to that person in that hole as they? self-assess, process, and meditate. They're not gonna dig themselves out of the hole and leave the hole behind. They're gonna get lighter and lighter themselves and raise up so that they can feel and experience physically what it's like to be one with the source field. That's what a dark night of the soul is. And that's how you get out of it. And that's how I got out of it. And now you know. <laughs> Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. And oh, wow, I, I love that explanation of the sheet and the little dent, you know, and as you are clearing and processing and meditating, you're rising, but that dent is also rising with you, you know? That's right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, how, that's how I see it. And it's like... You're always held by the source field. Yeah. Every that's... time you feel like you're not... <laughs> Drop into your body. Drop into the cells of your body. Remember that you're part of nature. You're part of the source field. You never left. It might feel painful because of the density mm -hmm. and the junk. And it might feel heavy. It might feel separate. But that's the, uh, that's the illusion. It's a trick. It's yeah. a trick of, of the illusion of density. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And I thank you. And I'm, I'm so glad you asked the question because, you know, we have all experienced dark nights of the soul. Some of us more than once because we're stubborn. <laughs> right. Me too. Sheesh. <laughs> I could say like probably had that whole experience for like uh, at least 20 years of it. Like that's what made me not want to live anymore. I mean, I didn't really want to live from 15 onwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so, you know, yeah, that's what it takes. And so th there, I just want to say that there, there's hope, you know, yes. but not just hope, there are tools, there's processes that you can use. And as uh, Elizabeth shared today, they're easy to do, and anybody can do them. Right? Yes, yes. And that anybody can attain enlightenment. Without anybody. having to meditate 50 hours a day for 50 years. In a cave. In a cave. Alone. Alone. In the mountains, in the Himalayas. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it while you have kids and a farm and a business and... Yes. <laughs> and I'm not enlightened by any means, but I'm getting there. I can yeah. see a clear path. I can see a clear path and I'm never going to give up. Don't give up. Yeah. And that's a big thing. Don't give up. You know, and so I know that there have been times when I've wanted to give up as well. Definitely. But of course, you know, I had my kids, I had my parents, I, you know, I have my, my husband. Um, so I had stuff to anchor me in. And then each time I wanted to, source came and said, basically, no. <laughs> you know? right. So, right. And so it's like, okay, you know, um, but we do, we do experience that density from time to time. Right. And, but we can also get not out of it per se, but we can lift ourselves up. 
to get to be out of that density. We can raise up that density to be light again. We're always light, but so we can see the light and we can embody the light and we can transmit that light again, right? Yeah, and so the light can move around more freely. What density is, is really the inability of all that light to actually move around freely. Mm -hmm. That's why you feel more expanded when you are able to process more of that junk and trauma out because you're replacing it with formless light and you feel it physically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you start to embody more and more light, um, you do tend to see things differently. You have a different perception of what light actually is, what spirit actually is, what oneness actually is, and what your purpose, you know, like Elizabeth was talking about. And for me, your purpose is to experience um, love, experience love, uh, embody love, share love. It's all about the love, but mostly it's about self-love, us loving ourselves as well and seeing where we love ourselves and where we don't, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's the foundation of this universe. Love is a harmonic. It's not a single wavelength. It's the whole thing. It's all <laughs> the wavelengths. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, this, yeah, Jordan says this is a very special episode. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. You're so sweet. Yeah. Thank you all. Your questions have been beautiful. I really hope they've helped. Oh, I definitely, definitely know so. I was going to say, I definitely think so. I definitely know so. So thank you so much, everyone, for all of your questions and for, you know, being with us and co-creating this space with us and showing up. And by showing up, what, what are you saying? You're declaring that you are wanting to embody more light, right? That you are light and that you're willing to do the work, <laughs> you know, exactly. and continue to do the work. And the work doesn't have to be hard or arduous. It doesn't have to be a struggle. It can be simple 15 minutes a day, you know. It can be joyful. It can be experimental. It can be a discovery. And I am able to maintain this level of purity because I stay in a state of amazement. Hmm. I mean, I wake up every day just amazed. I'm wandering around all the time just in wonder. That's one of the strands of my energy is wonder. Mm -hmm. Um, but I approach processing as wonder. I understand how arduous feels because I felt that too. Um, but as I've gotten deeper into this and gotten really deep into it, it's been amazing and wondrous and yeah. joyful. Even the darkest of the dark stuff has been really incredible to unwrap that and uncover it. Yeah, I always find it interesting. It's like, wow, how low can I go? Like, how dark can I go? How deep can I go down that rabbit hole? You know? Good. Yes. Good. It's like that's so interesting how far I can go, you know. Um, so yeah. yeah, it was. It, it can be interesting. <laughs> Test yourself, everybody. Test yourself. You're the experimenter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Test it. Absolutely. So thank you, thank you. I know we went a little bit long, so no, it's okay. I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Namaste. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your space, and thank you so much, Elizabeth. This was absolutely brilliant. We'll have to have you come back again for sure. I'd so, love to because thank it's you, such Laura. a wonderful it's conversation. Talk. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you, everyone. And until next time, may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>